Seed. I've just had a letter from East Team Surgery. Bad uh, news is it, Hancock? Don't forget to make a will and leave the house to your best friend, me. <laughs> I will not be leaving my house to you, Sir James. Anyway, it's not bad news. It has to be bad news. You never get good news from the doctors, do ya? That's where you're wrong, Sid. Dr. Jollop says, and I'll read... Could you kindly attend Cheam Hospital because we think you can help us with our research into something that will be of benefit to mankind? So you've decided not to give your body to science after all, Ned. <laughs> yes, very funny. I don't think it's my organs they want this time, Sid. How can you help benefit mankind, Hancock? You're in a terrible state. Look at ya. Oh, I'm not. I'm in the prime of life, ready for anything I am. I quickly run for the bus. But the bus always wins, doesn't it? <laughs> I bet Jollop wants to put you on a diet. What? You're joking. I'm very careful what I eat. Hope you're in Atlas. I'm trim. You go and try and pinch an inch. Go on, go on. <laughs> Evening, Mr. Hancock. I'm Dr. Jollop. It's good of you to come along. I'm glad to be of assistance, Doctor. Anything to help my fellow man and the community. And I'm in the, you know, you can trust me. Yes, it's all right. You can roll your trail legs down now. I get it. Yes, yeah, very public spirited, Mr. Hancock. I wish there were more people like you. Saying that, you are a very exceptional person. One in a million, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> One in a million, eh? So, what exactly have I got that the rest haven't, Doctor? Let me guess. It's my brain, isn't it? You want to know how a comedian thinks. <laughs> well, not exactly. It's not your brain, Mr. Hancock. But I can't tell you at the moment what it is. It's top secret. There are spies from other hospitals out there trying to get there before us. So, could you lie on the bed? I'd like to take a few measurements. Certainly, Doctor. Of course. It won't hurt, will it? <laughs> No, I'll be really gentle, don't worry. I wouldn't want to hurt my prized specimen, would I? Oh dear, he's fast now. <laughs> I'm sorry about that, Doctor. I have a low threshold for pain. I don't even like having my toenails cut. <laughs> I'm not using anything sharp. Don't worry, I use the tape measure. Although some old people get worried, they think I'm measuring them up for a coffin. Yes, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the silly devils. You weren't, were you? <laughs> of course not. Just relax. You're going to help me make a tremendous advance in medical science. I'll be known worldwide like Christian Barnard. And so will you. Christian Barnard. Oh, yes, I remember. The man who looked after orphaned young boys, you mean. It was called Christian Barnardos, if I'm not mistaken. <laughs> Mm, yes, that's him. So now, Dr. Jollop, what would you like me to do? Well, I'd just like to make an assessment. I'm looking at you to make sure you're just the right size. And I think you are. You're perfect. A perfect specimen. That's nice of you to say, Doctor. I do try and keep in shape. As a matter of interest, as far as you're concerned, what does keeping in shape involve? Does it involve visiting a lot of restaurants? <laughs> I'm sorry, I don't understand. I thought you were paying me a compliment, Dr. Jollop. No, don't worry, you're bulking up nicely. Lovely pair of shoulders you've got. Oh, thank you. Yes, I'm quite proud of my shoulders, Doctor. As it happens, women pay me compliments. Some ladies like them big, don't they? <laughs> yes, well, I suppose they do. Now, what weight did you say you were? Now you mention it, so I'm quite proud of myself, Dr. Jollop. I haven't put on an ounce since I left school. Hey, you were nice and chubby as a child, weren't you? 
<laughs> Mummy's little treasure. The apple of her eye. I bet you used to eat your own weight in rusts, didn't you? <laughs> I can try, Doctor. I've always been slim. I'm still only 11 stone, the same as I was when I was 10. <laughs> Go on, you're not 11 stones, you're a garden roller, not a garden rake. <laughs> I would say you're about 15 stones with those whacking great shoulders. Yes, I'll put 15 stone and get the nurse to weigh you later. Now your height, let me guess, you're about 5 feet 9, Mr. Hancock. Goodness gracious, Doctor, I'm nearly 6 feet. I tower over my lodger, St. James, for example. He looks up to me, you know. Hmm, and how tall is he? I believe he's about five foot eight. Yes, I thought so. Now, do you know what your BMI is? Aha. Uh -huh. No, sorry, Doctor, I've temporarily forgotten what that is. Is it something like a BMW? <laughs> no, stop this in about. No, your BMI is your body mass index. Yours is over 150, as it happens. 150, eh? Is that good? Yes, that's really excellent. The higher the better. It's like I too, as far as I'm concerned. That means your body's a genius, Mr. Enkel. <laughs> Very good. Now we need you to stay in hospital for a few days. Well, I wasn't planning to stay, Doctor. I, I'm really happier in my own bed, I must admit. That's one of the hospitals arranged with Mr. James to bring your own bed from 23 railway cuttings to the hospital. To make you nice and comfy. Oh, yes. How can I refuse? That's very kind, Doctor. It will be a home from home. I always say a happy content patient has a healthy appetite. We don't want you starving and losing weight now, do we? <laughs> oh, of course not. Perish the thought. But what exactly do you want me to do while I'm in hospital, Doctor? I can help with the patients. Uh, I'm pretty good at diagnosis, it happens. I was a Cub Scout, and uh, I've got my first aid badge. <laughs> Nothing. Just lie there, and we'll find out whether you can help us in our medical advances. Yes, righty-o, Doctor. I am at your disposal. By the way, will I get an award or a medal for my contribution to medical science? A scroll with my name on, perhaps. Nothing pretentious. <laughs> Of course you will. We'll go further than that. We're going to name a piece of medical equipment after you. It will have your name. Yes, well, that's more like it, Doctor. Do you mean like a stethoscope, an endoscope, or an X-ray machine? Yes, that's the right idea, Tony, but not quite as grand as that. More a big pan or it replacement. <laughs> Oh well, whatever. Fame at last. My name will be writ large in the annals of medicine. Everyone who goes round hospital will see my name on some piece of hospital equipment. It will be my legacy. Yes, this will make Sid jealous. I'll probably get more respect at last. <laughs> Ah, yes. I'm looking forward to this. I always wanted to be a doctor. Indeed, my parents wanted me to become a doctor as well. I sort of feel I've let them down and away by becoming an actor. I did play a doctor on the BBC once, though. Yes, Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> yes, indeed. This was meant to be. This will be my chance to set the record straight. Dr. Hancock. Yes, that has a certain ring about it. Good morning. Did you have a good night, Mr. Engel? Yes, very nice. Thank you, Dr. Jollop. I slept the sleep of the just. Oh, good. We always find fat. I mean, well-built patients sleep well in hospital. That's why we feed them up. Fat? Fat? Did I miss you, Doctor? You don't think I'm fat, do you? No, of course not. You wouldn't be here, would you? You're just right to your bone structure. You look very well on it anyway. You're very sturdy, you are. Sturdy, yes. But I'm in proportion, Doctor, aren't I? Like a gazelle. Rippling muscle, Mr. Engel. Perfectly balanced. Gliding over the veldt. Very svelte. <laughs> <laughs> Graceful and ready to pounce. Mm, don't let the nurses hear you say that. They'll go on strike. <laughs> we don't want you in the other me too in here, do we? <laughs> Oh, Doctor, I didn't mean it like that, although I have been getting one or two admiring glances for my physique while I've been in here. Mr. Hancock! Uh, sorry, matron. <laughs>
Yes, well, moving quickly on, I'd like to have a few words as to how we're going to present your contribution to medical science to the British press and the good old British public. It's going to be a lot of interest. It's going to be a big news item. Almost as big as you. <laughs> well, that shouldn't present any difficulties, Doctor. I'm used to public speaking, being a comedy legend and all that. I could give a bit of a presentation, a few light-hearted jokes and bon mots. Oh, we'll have to read it first. We don't want you saying anything derogatory about me or the hospital, do we? Oh, of course not. But why would I do that? Gracious me, without you, I wouldn't be advancing medical science, would I? Oh, bravo. I could have written that myself. I'm glad you're taking everything in the right spirit, Mr. Angle. By the way, you haven't got a spare pair of pyjamas, have you? No problemo. I'll get Sid to drop them down. But why do you need them? Well, we need them for your body double. The advancement to medical science, I mean. The two of you will make a great photo shoot side by side. My body double? I, I don't understand, Doctor. You didn't clone me while I was asleep, did you? <laughs> no, of course not. You're not Dolly the Sheep, are you? Bah, bah. No, I'm not trying to pull a wall over your eyes, don't worry. Well, in that case, I'll get Sid to bring some over. <laughs> Greetings, fellow patients. Have you been in here long? I could take a look at you if you like. As I was saying to Dr. Jollop, I should have been a doctor. I suppose it's not too late. I could retrain, go to medical school and take the exams. I'm sorry, I'm not boring you, am I? Truth, he's not very talkative, miserable cove. <laughs> you having a good chat, Mr. Angle? Well, I was trying to, but the patient in the bed next door, Dr. Jollopy, seems a bit quiet. Is he all right? Not a terminal illness, I hope. He had you fooled then. Lifeline, isn't he? But he's not a person, Mr. Angle. That's our new medical advancement. Is it? By Jove, what is it then? That, and I say it with pride, is the world's very first overweight mannequin for medical students. We call it Anthony Angot. It's very chubby, you can pinch its cheeks. Let the junior doctors try and wrestle with that one, I say. <laughs> Hang on a minute, Jollop. Why are you using my name for the flaming dummy? Because it's based on you, that's why. You're the perfect model. Here, have another look. I've just switched on his AI capabilities, and you can talk to him now. 